Hi everyone, you're listening to another and the latest edition of the Steve Perriner podcast. Tom is still behind the scenes, who's not going to really show himself tonight. He's still hurting from the midweek defeat by Burnley. But Howard, welcome Howard. Hi. Is obviously in attendance, as you heard. Uh, we're honoured to have a special guest tonight in the name of Paul Trevilian. I mentioned on the last podcast that this would be the case, so let me introduce him with the help of Wikipedia. I cannot read it all, as that would take up most of the 40 minutes we have available to us. Paul Trevelyan, born 11th of March 1934, is an acclaimed sports artist whose career spans 70 years. Born in Tottenham, North London, yes! Trevelyan produced artwork for publications like Eagle while still at school. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Trevelyan devised and illustrated pieces for the Daily Mirror, Express, The Sun, Daily Telegraph and Times. Uh, uh, Paul Trevelyan spent much of the 60s in the US working with Mark McCormack at IMG for some of the world's biggest brands, is the author and illustrator of over 20 books which have sold worldwide. Well done, Paul. <laughs> he has met and drawn some of the sport's biggest names, including, listen to these, Pele, Bobby Moore, George Best, Franz Beckenbauer, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Oscar De La Hoya. As a young man, he also met and drew British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Is that right, Paul? Yes, I met Sir Winston, and he was the man, the main man. What I was surprised about, he had a very small hand, and when I shook it, he held it. And the first thing he ever said to me was, when was you born? I said, 1934. He said, you were five when the war was declared. I said, absolutely right, Winston. He said, listen, listen. He said, did you leave? London, or did you stay? I said, I stayed. He said, so you're a boy from the Blitz? I said, yes. He said, and where did you live during the Blitz? I said, Tottenham. Five oh. minutes from the Tottenham Hotspur football ground. Da, 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 Oh, the English Tottenham Hotspur, they're the best team in the land. They play the da, 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 win the league, they'll win the cup, there is no doubt. That's why we hear those Tottenham fans are very proudly shout, play up your watch Spurs and bring us glory. You're the finest football team throughout the land. Tottenham rejoices with happy voices. You're the finest football team throughout the land. Now, I heard that when I went to my first football match, and that was at White Art Lane, and that was when I was three years old, and it was a cup replay, Everton, Tottenham, and I went there, and I could hear them singing that song over and over again. So I learned the words before I left the ground, but Dixie Dean was playing. There's the program. Still got it. That is the program. Wow. 1937. Wow. I'm three years old. And Dixie Dean got a bigger roar. I mean this. A bigger roar than any of the Spurs players or the Spurs team when it come out. People wanted to see Dixie Dean. He scored two goals. And the roar for those goals is unbelievable. Tottenham won 4-3. And I went home and looked at a piece of white paper. And for the first time, I saw Dixie Dean as clear as I saw him playing. And that's when I knew I was an artist. I could draw. And I drew Dixie Dean over and over again. I learned everything about Dixie Dean. My blue and white scarf that my mum had knitted for me, I wanted the name Dixie on it. And then I realised I supported football. I supported every team throughout the country. Tottenham was my team but I supported every team. So that's the first impression for me. And I went to Tottenham Oxford's St. Francis de Sales. That was in Tottenham, St. Francis de Sales. And when I went to school, the first thing I did was remember where the Tottenham Oxford football ground was as a little boy. Then I left the, left the school, left the playground, 
Made my way down, got someone to take me across the road, and I watched the players train. I watched them, half a row, Willie all. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then it's just carried on. That's why I don't read all right. I can't read all right. I've never learned, never had time. I've been too busy watching football, watching sport. That's my life, my whole life. So I went to the Tottenham Hospital football ground when I should have been at school. And my teachers was Ditchburn, Ramsey, Willis, Nicholson, Clark, Burgess, Waters, Bennett, Dukeman, Bailey, Medley. That was the team. And they were my teachers. And the best teacher of all was Bill Nick. Because every time I saw him, he gave me a couple of pencils. He said, Paul, get these sharpened and get busy. And Alf Ramsey, I'm drawing already. I'm at school and I'm drawing for the Weekly Herald. I'm, I'm drawing for the Lily White magazine. And Alf L. Finn, who was the editor of the Lily White magazine, said to me, Paul, I've had Alf on the phone. He wants you to bring that drawing you've done of him heading the ball, what was in Lily White. I thought, he's going to sign it. He's going to, Alf's going to, I told all my mates, I'm going to the ground. Alf wants to see me. I've got the, I took it along to see Alf. I said, Alf, here it is. And Alf looked at it and slowly tore it up. <laughs> and let the pieces drop to the floor. And then he smiled and said, Glory, doing what I do best. I step back. I play with the ball on the ground. The higher the ball in the air, lower the standard of play. Now, listen, Paul, if you want to draw footballers, make sure you draw what they do best. Make sure you draw not left house heading the ball, not me. Draw me with the ball on the ground. He said, they're going to serialize my book in the Lily White. And I've told them I want to use a drawing done by you. But draw me with the ball on the ground. On and the I floor. In Lily White. That was Al, my first lesson. And that described the push and run team. Ball on the floor. Correct. And better than that, I saw half a row, because I was on the ground. Listen, I've had no schooling. My teachers have been sports stars. That's why I don't, I don't read all right. It's true. I've never read a history book. Then I don't know anything about geography. When I was in America, McCormick said, you don't like New York, we send you to uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I thought I could walk there. I thought it was Alan McCormick. He said, no, you've got to get a plane. <laughs> and listen, uh, it, Mark McCormick was so worried about me in America, he sent me to see a psychiatrist. And I, he said, no. because what you've done with the Arnold Palmer diary, we can't believe, but we want it. It's, it's unbelievable. Where do you get your ideas from? I said, I, I've never grown up. Never. All, I, all I've ever done, what I've ever done, is kept, I kept the little boy alive. A little boy believes everything. He thinks he can do everything. And so do I. Every, every single, you put a, a tin pot on a boy's head, a little boy, and you think he's a robot. He'll run around. Even now, put a tin pot on my head, I'll be a robot. I'm not around. That's my life. I went to see the psychiatrist. He said, why haven't you uh, um, gone down schooling? Why, why, why don't you read all right? I said, because the more you're educated, the more restricted you become in your thinking. You get smaller and smaller. Now, I think like a child, completely wide, as wide as possible. I'm three years old. I finished up with the psychiatrist on the couch. And I was going, <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> true. Paul, you saw the push and run team. You saw the double team. The double which, team. Which, which did you enjoy watching the most? I'm off ten, I, know, I don't know any tables. And that used to be, Paul, what, what, do the two times table. Two, 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 two. No, no, it's more than two, 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 Paul. It goes further. <laughs> what's after? What's after two, 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 two? two, two you know the league table. You know the Tottenham team. Yes, I do. Brown, Baker, Henry, Blanchflair, Norman, Mackay, Dyson, White, Bobby Smith. Bang that one. Pick it out. Allen. He was in the double team. Allen, not Greasley. <laughs> Allen and Jones. Jones, the best winger I've ever seen. And then I saw Steve Perryman. What a player. <laughs> that was, a, I looked at him, he was my inspiration because Bill Nick always would say to me, and I mean this, he never plays a bad game. Doesn't always play great ones, Paul, but he never plays a bad one. And he always gives 100%. He never leaves anything, anything at all on the field. 
Every single, he, I'm telling you, he said, do you know what, Paul? I line up the players and I go down filling their shirts. And when I get to Steve Perryman's, my hand is soaking. So I always make sure Jimmy greases last. And when I get to Jimmy, I can dry my hands on his. He never runs around. It's a true story. That was built next to me. Come on, the boys. Oh, well done. Well done. Which team did you enjoy watching the most? The, the push and run team or the double team? The double team. The double team I enjoyed the most. And the team that excited me the most, and I mean this, was the team that played... And this is why I did the book. That was 50 years ago. Hold it up, Paul. And there it is. Hold it. The book. Yeah. That's the book. I've done this book. And that was 50 years ago. And the team then was a team of internationals. They had Sprake, he played for Wales. Greeny for England. Madeley played for England. Bremner. Billy Bremner played for Scotland. Big Jack Charlton played for England. Norman Hunter played for England. On the wing was Lorma, played for Scotland. Inside was Johnny Giles, played for Northern Ireland. Centre forward, Alan Sniffer Clark, he played for England. In, and then there was Mick Jones. Mick Jones, he played for, only played three caps, but he still played. And then there was a great Eddie Gray. Now that team, I thought was unbeatable. I thought it was the best team I'd ever seen. But I'm in America. I'm in America with Mark McCormick. And I can't settle in New York. It's the buildings are too high. They're too high. I feel, I'm, look, I'm three years old. So when I'm running around and I'm looking up at these tall buildings, <laughs> I said, Mark, I've got to go back home. He said, no, I send you to Cleveland, Ohio, and you can work with Jay LaFay, because Jay LaFay looks after Jack Nicholas. I said, okay. And I went there, I said, no, I'm still not happy. He said, but Paul, look, it's so lovely. It's all up. I said, no, I'm not happy. I said, go and see Cleveland Indians. You'll like that. So I went to see Cleveland Indians. I couldn't believe it. On my way there, they were giving out hats. I know it was all advertising. They were giving out T-shirts. And when you got to the ground, there was fireworks. There was the players running around. And there was the cheerleaders. The choreography was frightening. I couldn't see girls. It was like Bugby Barkley. It was like watching a film. Because I love the films. I've been brought up in the films. I can't read all right. So I go to the cinema. I can look at comics and make up what's going along. And I thought, I can't believe this. This is the best. I, I, we've got to do this. I thought them's going to do it. And I went back and saw Bill Nick. I said, Bill, what we got to do for the new season? He said, what's that, Paul? I said, I thought of an idea. They've got to wear stocking tags with their numbers on. And that way, when a player's on the floor and you can't see who it is, you see his number. Or when there's a big crowd, he said, no, 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 no. We're not going to put numbers on their socks. I said, I've got some other ideas. I, I, I said, look, I, I, I want the names on, on the back. He said, no, you can't have that, Paul. You can't. No, we're not going to do that, Paul. Um, I said, he said, look, Paul, why don't you go and see Don Revy? His team, team of internationals, they need it. He said, because they've got the reputation of being dirty leads and they're the best footballing team. I'm telling you that, Paul. They are tremendous. And I know Don because... My best friend was Ronnie Burgess, and I still say to this day, he was the best player ever to wear a Tottenham shirt. Ronnie, Ronnie Burgess was, he was unbelievable. Welsh international, the Welsh captain, he was unreal. Was that Bill Nick's oh, words or, oh, or was that Bill Nick's words or your words? Pardon? Was that Bill Nicholson's words or your words about Ronnie Burgess? My words were Bill's, but I agree okay. with Bill. Every word okay. that Bill said, the best player I ever, 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 ever saw, it, even, I mean, I always say now, who was the best modern player? I say um, that was um, the man himself, um, Paul Gascoigne. He had everything. Paul Gascoigne, before he hurt his knee, he was the man. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favourite player, Steve Perriman, and I mean that. I love Pat Jennings because I want to be a goalkeeper. My favourite player, the reason it, it's, it's Steve Perriman is because I watch the players, and there's times when they were gold down, and you can see their heads drop. I never saw that with Steve Poneman. And I know that there's only three things you can do when you get a football. You can either pass it to a teammate, you can either pass it and make an opening for another player to run on and hurt the other defence, or you can carry on and score a goal. Now, I saw all that, 
all that in the most important, the most important game Tottenham played after they were beaten by Leeds in the sixth round of the FA Cup. Sniffer Clark got the goal just before half time, boom, made it 1 1. And after that, big Jack Charlton bang, they were out, out of the cup. They, they murdered us that day. They the for Cup. Could they win? They had to win it. But they had, they drew in the semi final, AC Milan. Now, I knew Bill very well because I was a little schoolboy. I mean, I was there, but I mean, Bill Nick, I mean, I, I said Tottenham could do the double. I said Tottenham could do the double, did it in the Weekly Herald. And I did a drawing to myself and I said, if Tottenham don't do the double this year, I'll wear a black tie for the rest of the season. And they got beat in the third round. Blackburn beat them. I couldn't believe it. They got beat them 3 1. But Dave McCarthy was injured that day. So it was a couple of other players. But no matter, they got beat. And Bill Nicholson wrote to the editor of the Weekly Herald. And I was drawing every week for him. And he said, He's irresponsible, Trevelyan. Any more of the double talk. And we're going to stop all facilities for the Weekly Herald. But he <laughs> said to me, Paul, we've got to stop it. I said, No, no, no. I can, they can do the double. I still believe they can do the double. They're that good. And he said, Paul. No more double talk. It's not been done since 1980. That was Preston. It's, no one's done it. There's been some fantastic teams, Paul. It can't be done. So the following year, I drew all the players. This is in the book. This is in this book. This is in the Beaver book. This is how proud I am of the boys. And I drew all the players in a line. And then I went to the training ground and I got more to sign it because I thought, this is the year you're going to do the double. And then I went to Danny Blanchflower last. And he said, why am I last? I'm captain. I should have been first. I said, Danny, you could do the double this year. He said, don't start. Bill Nick, has he forgiven you? I said, I don't know, but he still gives me pencils and tells me to sharpen them. He said, right. <laughs> now, listen, what I want you to do, Paul, it's not to mention the double. I said, look, win your first 25 games. He said, what? I said, win your first 25 games, then you won the league, then go and win the cup. He said, win your first 25. I said, you can do it. You're that good. You can win every game. They only lost one. They won their first 11, and they only lost one. I still a record. I think, they, I think it was 10 they won, and they drew with Manchester City. That was the 11th game. I still a record. No team's ever won 10 right off. No team, not even now, not even today. Still a record. And they went on, and they won the double. But during that double run, I couldn't, I couldn't watch them because I couldn't take the pressure. I thought, no, no I can't. Uh, I, I, I want to win it so much. I, and Peter Edwards said to me, your cartoons are dropping right off. What's the matter? I said, I can't watch the games. I, the pressure's too much. He said, oh, come on, Paul. You said they could do the double. They can do it this year. I said, I, I know, but I can't watch the games. So he said, OK, OK, OK. And then I thought, Dixie Dean. Camsell broke the second division record with 59 goals in a season. Dixie was trying to do it with 60. Could he do it? And he did. He scored three against Arsenal in the last match. I thought, I can't believe it. I've got to go and see Dixie. So I got onto the Liverpool Echo and I said, I want to do the Dixie Dean story. They said, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I said, I want to do the Dixie Dean story. I know more about Dixie Dean than Dixie Dean. They said, well, come up and see him. He comes in on a Thursday. And I come up and saw Dixie. I said, Dixie, look, Dixie. Oh, I know everything about you, Dixie. Everything. I know when you fractured your skull. He said, that's right. I came off a motorbike. I said, I know you fractured in three places. How did you ever come back? How did you get over that? He said, I'll tell you how I got over it. And what he said then should be said today when they say, ban heading for youngsters. That's ridiculous. Because when Dixie come back, he took the bladder out of the football and he headed the bladder. Boom. Boom, that's a lightweight bladder, but that used to hurt him if he didn't edit correctly. He had to edit right in the middle of the forward, and he practiced and practiced, and he was good with his head then, but now he was getting better. Then he got a little rubber tennis ball, and boom, boom, boom. And when he talked about the tennis ball, I told him about how the great Arthur Rowe, when he came up, when he got the push and run team, what a team they were. They were, oh, they were different to, to the double team. They were different. They were push and run. And what they meant by push and run, he gave all the players a little tennis ball and said, run down the corridor, hit it against the wall. When it comes off, get it. Hit it against the wall, because how fast I want that ball to be. And that's what they did. And I thought, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. And I told Dixie, said, why have you come up here when Tottenham could be do the double? I said, I can't watch the games, the pressure. He said, well, I wouldn't have you in my team. I said, what do you mean? What, what, what did you say? He said, because you don't believe. 
You've been on the bench, son. You don't believe. You said they could do the double. And you don't believe. You're not my team. I thought, God, he said, you're a loser. I said, no, no, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I, I'm, I promise you, I'm a winner. He said, no, you've got to believe. And I did. From that moment on, I believed they could do the double. And they went on and they did the double. But when I went to see Bill, Bill Nick, and Bill Nick was in that push and run team. Oh, God. I, I, look, I can't describe what it was. It was a bit like uh, Chelsea the other night. The other night, Chelsea, boom, 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 for the first 10 minutes. It was, let me, they're as near as I've seen to the double team. Better than the city, much better than Manchester City. Boom, boom, boom. Very quick, very quick. Bang, 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 bang. And the double team was Eddie Bailey. I tell you what, I've never seen anybody do this. Bill Nick said, I said, what's Eddie Bailey so, so, so what, why is he so important to the team? And Bill Nick said, he can trap and pass the ball, same movement. Nobody else can do that. You can fire a ball at him and he'll tap it in the air. He can be off his ground, it could be off the ground, he'll trap it and take the pace off and leave the exact pace for another player. And he said, that's what's so important in football, Paul. You must find your teammates. And that is why when I say Steve Prever is my favorite player, when Tottenham got beat in the sixth round of the cup, I was so happy. I was so happy because I wanted, I wanted Leeds to go on and win the cup. I promised that to Jack Charlton, and Jack Charlton gave me a sock tag after the after the final. I, I love Big Jack. Now, Tottenham have been beat, but I wanted them now to win the youth for cup so much. But then they do AC Milan. And by then I was now talking to Bill. And I said to Bill, I said, Bill. Is it a good draw or a bad draw? It's a bad draw. I didn't want AC Milan. I didn't want them. I just didn't want them. He said, but we got them and let's see how we do. And we will go down at home. And I thought, out. they're out. And this is why he's my favourite player. The other players' heads are dropped, but not little Stevie Perriman. Now, there's only three things you can do with a ball. And when you got it, Steve got it. He started to run through and I thought, He's going to pass it. He's going to pass it. And then pick it out. That's 1-1. One, one. Good boy, Steve. Good boy. I can see it now. As I'm talking about it, I can see it. I'm an artist. And I can see this as clear as, as I've painted it. And I thought, 1-1. One, one. That's the boy. That's the boy. That's the man. And then I couldn't believe it. He goes, he says, this is even better. He's outside the box. He's at least 30, 35. Could be 40 yards away. Bang! Take it out, son. That's 2 1. I couldn't believe it. And then I go to Milan. I see Milan in the replay. And Steve is going through again. I think he's going to do it again. And then he did what I've been told is only thingy things, three things you can do with a football. And this time he controlled it, went through, and then passed it out of Mallory. And Mallory bang in the net. Bang. 2 1. We was there. We was there. And I was the happiest man in the world. And from that moment on, of the modern team, of the, of the first team, the push and run, I loved, I loved Ted Ditchburn. I loved him to death. I loved him and Ronnie Burgess. I loved them. And then in the, in the double team, I loved Bobby Smith. Bobby Smith, uh, I was joining him for the weekly all the time. I loved him. And then of the other team, Paul Gascoigne. He's my neighbour. He's my neighbour. And I love, I love Gascoigne. But of the team that won the UEFA Cup and won the FA Cup two years running with the man. It was, look, come on, look what Steve's done. Nobody realises it. Nobody realises Look, when you talk about that UEFA final, they will say, do you remember them two goals that Shiver scored when we went to uh, Wolverhampton? He won us the cup, didn't he? I said, no, he didn't. So what are you talking about? He won us the cup. He got the two goals. I mean, Murray scored the equaliser, a uh, great diving there, there. But then I said, no, it wasn't the Shiver's goals. It was a Steve Perryman's goals in the semi-final. We should have been beat by AC Milan. So when I say, and I mean this, I honestly mean it, you're my hero. Imagine that, Stevie Perryman. You're my hero. I love oh. you to death. You want to say you fuck up, man. Come on, stand up. You've got to make a more noise. Look, I came to you at the Queen's Hotel in, 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 when, when I did the, when, when in this time, at the Queen's Hotel, and I said to you, I'm going to give you some glucose tablets. And you said, why is that? I said, because you never stop running. See, I loved you then. You never stop running. I love you. And you said to me, well, what if the glucose tablets are not any good? I said, no, they'll be good. They'll be good. They'll be good. I said, look how well you're playing this year. You said, no, I'm not. 
They're not playing that well this year. And yet the funny thing was when I spoke to Revy after the match, I said, how many of that Tottenham team would get in to the Leeds team? He said, definitely Jennings. We'd have Jennings. Jennings. Yeah, I, I agree with that. He said, Jennings. I said, who else? He said, Gilzeen floats out the game and if every muscle on him, he goes, Chivers plays when he wants to. Uh, but Stevie Perryman, this is true, I'm not making it up. Stevie Perryman, I'd have to think about him because I'm telling you now, um, Stevie might well fit in for Maidley. He could fit in Bobbly. He could do a job like Bremner. He should, see, what that boy is, he never gives up. He's a nuisance. That was the word. That's how he described you. He's got a nuisance value. You never know what he's going to do. He'll fight for the ball. And Johnny Jones always spoke, spoke well about you. He said, the guy sees danger too much. He keeps coming back, helping everybody else out. Do his own thing. He's a much better player than people realise. He's doing everybody else's work. That was you, Steve. And that's why I admire you so much. You're the best. I mean it. You are the best. And you've got to make sure that people know you're the best. You've got to talk yourself up a bit more. <laughs> I would have done that if you didn't use those you're, words. Those you're, you're doing all the talking for me, Paul. Paul, did your drawing ever get you in trouble, say at school or, or anything? Look, when I when I was at school, I was always drawing Dixie Dean, and it went on a school wall. And my teacher said to me, I've got your school report, Paul. Uh, you failed the 11 plus. I said, yeah, because I can't read the questions. He said, we know that. So you failed that, but take this report home because your dad won't be happy, but tell him that that drawing of Dixie Dean was on the school wall. So I took it home. I said, look, Dad, this is on the school wall. He said, oh, that's good. They put it on the wall. I said, yeah, they put it on the wall, Dad. He said, where's your report? Let's have a look. He said, cool. He said, two out of ten is bad, but that's <coughs> two out of a hundred. He said, what do you do at school? I said, I don't do I'm always over the top of the football ground. He said, Paul, don't ever worry, you'll get a living with a pencil. And then you say, did I ever get into trouble? Well, the reason was, I, when I saw Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I thought those little figures moved. I, I want my figures to move. I, I want my drawings to move. And I, I couldn't draw the huntsman too well. I could draw the dwarfs. I couldn't focus him clear. And I saw a big poster. I thought, ah. I'll cut that down and get it. I'm cutting it down and a voice said, do you need any help, son? And I turned around and I said, yes, I can't get this down. He was a policeman. He said, you're a vandal. I said, what does that mean? He said, you're going to tear that down and then do a paper chase home. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, like, I'm an artist. He said, oh, yeah, what do you do? I said, I draw the dwarfs. He said, here's my notebook. Draw me one. I said, this dopey. He said, oh, that's good. Can you draw happy? I said, it's happy. He said, what about uh, Grumpy? I said, I'll draw them all if you get the poster down. He said, all right, son, you draw me all the seven dwarfs and I bring the poster. And he got the poster down, the policeman. And I went home, I said to my dad, look, the policeman, he got this poster down for me. He said, what, what, what did you do? I said, I gave him the drawings. It's like when I walked out of Mark McCormick. I walked, this is, listen, you say, did my drawings ever get me into trouble? It's the complete opposite. Because I, I walked out of Mark McCormick, I wanted to work with Lee Trevino. And he said, you're getting a third. This is true, I've got the contract. You're getting a third of Arnold, a third of Jack, and a third of Gary Player. You're mad. I said, no. He said, listen, you want Lee Trevino? I'll tear the contract up. I said, no, don't tear it up. Give me the contract. I'll tear it up. And I got in the cab and I suddenly thought, I've got no money. But I always carry a little black bag with a pencil and a paper. And I thought, look at the cabbie. As he's driving me to Kennedy Airport, I did a drawing of it. When I got out, I said, who's that? He said, that's me. That, that's mine. You give me. You give. I said, do I get a free ride? Can you get the free ride? You give me. You give me. I did, yeah, I get a free ride. I thought, I'll come back. I went all the way back. This is true. Got back in, in New York. I thought, right, I've got no money. I've not got any money from Mark. Mark's going to send me off a check on. But I've got no money. I walked straight into Tony Romo's. And I said, I want spare ribs. And the guy comes up and he said, what else? I said, full Monty the lot. And then I get the menu and on the back it's white. And I draw Frank Sinatra. I said, look, where's that? He said, oh, that's, that's mine, is it? I said, no, 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 I'm going to rub it out. I shouldn't have done that. I'm rub it out. I've got it. He said, no, no, don't rub it out. I put it on wall. I put it on wall. I said, well, what do I get? He said, you, you eat free. You eat free. 
I said, look, I draw you Sammy Davis, and Dean Martin, if you pay for my hotel tonight. He says, you run away. I said, no, I won't. He took me back. I would say, no, hotel. I come in the next day. He said, see those three people over there? They all want Frank Sinatra. Can you draw Frank Sinatra for them? I said, what have you told him? I told him it's $100 each. I said, you're a good man. I go and I draw the $100. Tell him I draw them. I draw them for him. This is true. And by the end of the week, the little restaurant was only had about 20 in, was now packed. They all wanted drawings. He said, we're in business. I said, no, I'm going back to England. And I left and come back to England. So my drawings had never, ever got me into trouble, apart from the one when I said they'd do the double. And Bill Nicholson never forgave me. He always said to me, Paul, that was irresponsible. And I said, yeah. no, Bill, because I was right the next year. And that's in the double billboard. I've got those two cartoons in the double billboard. Sure. Paul, was there ever a plan B? Yeah, supposing, you, supposing you hadn't been a cartoonist or... Yeah, drawing what this stuff. Been? What would you have been? I'll tell you what I would have been. And Bill Nicholson was right. I went to Tottenham Technical College. Now, listen to this. And this is how good I was. I went to St. Francis de Sales. And the nun, a sister, she used to put us in a circle and throw a tennis ball. And I kept dropping it. I kept dropping it. I'm seven. I kept dropping it. And she said, You're doing it on purpose, Trevelyan. You're staying in a circle. Now stay in a circle, because you do it on... I said, no, I can't catch anything. So I went home, I told my dad, he said, she makes you stay in the circle, right to the end? I said, yes, because I can't catch the ball. He said, it's come out, took me in the garden. You see that wall? I said, yes. He said, it's all broken up, isn't it? I said, yes, it's it, 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 all old bricks. Well, what am I... He said, throw the ball against that. When it comes off, catch it. And when you can catch it all the time, I come and watch you. I get thrown it against the wall. I was out there for nearly two hours. I was catching some, and then... Two nights later, I was catching them all, catching everything. I was catching everything. I thought, this is brilliant. Get my dad out. I said, Dad, I'm catching them all. Come and see me. He come out. He said, you've dropped one. I said, Dad, I don't know what happened. He said, it's the second one. You dropped it. I I'm going in. I'm Tell me when you can do it. I carried on and carried on. And then the, it, was, it, was, it was an office wall. And they came around and they said, we're getting sick and tired of that bang, 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 bang on the wall. It's upsetting the other workers. Can you tell your son to stop? He comes home from school at four o'clock and he goes, bang, 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 bang. My dad said, all right, I turned to stop. And he got a radio, my dad, and he put it right up by the wall and he turned it full up. And after 15 minutes, they come back in and said, tell him to keep throwing the ball again. We don't want to hear that radio. But they said, now go back and do it. And then I, I went back and sister, this is true, and sister threw the ball. I kept catching it. I'm the last one in. The last one. Boom, boom, boom. She's now throwing it. I'm catching it one-handed. And then I catch one. I throw it back. And sister drops it. Boom! And she said, we're never going to play this game again. It's over. And I went and I said, I won, I won, I won. I said, sister, drop the ball. He said, no, son. She didn't drop it. He should have said, she didn't catch it. She dropped it on purpose. <laughs> That's my daddy, the hardest man has ever been. I was using a rubber once. He said, what are you using rubber for? I said, I, I made a little mistake. He said, made a mistake, you're not concentrating. Give me the rubber, threw it in the fire. You're never going to have a rubber. Now concentrate. Concentrate. You want to be a good artist? Concentrate. That's why I work in pen and ink. You make one mistake in pen and ink. One. You start again. It's a one, four, seven every time, I'm telling you. It's a penalty take every time. And that's why... I never miss from four feet. You asked Pat Jennings. Pat Jennings said to Martin Joel, I went over there, Martin Joel said, I've heard you, you can putt. He said, I'd like to take you on in a putting contest. And Pat Jennings, this is true, he said, you don't take him on a putting. I went to America, you think, I challenge. This is, look, this is me. This is the man. And I call myself the man because when I went to America, Dixie Dina taught me, I've got a video. If you want to see it, I'll send it to you. And on the back, there's a million dollar challenge to the top, 50 American golfers. That's Tiger Woods. That's blooming Phil Nicholson. They're all there. A million dollars. And the one who misses from four feet sends that, signs that check to a children's hospital. Not one of them took me up because I was over wow. there for six months. Boom, boom, wow. boom, boom, boom. Never miss. Never miss. Howard, yes. Howard, <laughs> did you see the Leeds game against Spurs? Six round of the cup. Six round of the cup. Two one. Yeah. Certainly, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, we all thought Leeds were a fantastic side. Absolutely. And, and yet we, we took the lead. It was John Pratt taking a free kick. 
swung it towards the near post and it, I thought it was just going to get cleared away and somehow or another it avoided Sprake, et cetera, and scored. Gary Sprake but, made a big mistake there, didn't yes. he? Yep. And second half they came out, they equalised quite early and then pounded us and it was only a question of time and Jack Charlton with his usual standing on the Dutch line somehow yeah. managed to get above his head and in. And I think Pat saved us from a much heavier defeat. Yes. Yeah. Pat, Pat was some good? goalkeeper, eh? Did you like Pat? Pat Jennings, uh, listen, I, I, I listened. Bill Nicholson couldn't pick between Ditchburn or Pat, but he did say to me, Paul, I know you always wanted to be a goalkeeper. Would you ever been as good as Pat Jennings? I said, no, never, never, not as long as I live. He was the best. Do you he think was. he was better than Ditchburn? I said, Bill, he definitely was. He was the only man who I saw could do everything. I said he was a netminder. He was a netminder. Ted um, was a goalkeeper. And he said, what's the difference? I said, Ted used to dive and push stuff over the bar and then catch unbelievable shots. Oh, he was the first one to catch the ball. And when he dived, he was unbelievable. But he was an acrobat. Uh, but Ted, but De um, Jennings was a netminder. He could, he took his angles. Uh, the way he stopped the ball with his feet, he was the first goalkeeper to do that. Uh, yes. Everything about it could take the ball out of the air one handed. He, he wouldn't do my gloves. He made a big mistake there. And the biggest mistake because Corrigan did it. I told him, he said, No, to make my hands look too big. They're, they're, I said, This had got a look. He didn't want to do it. He should have done the gloves. He should have done the gloves, Pat Jennings. But he didn't do the gloves. He lost a fortune. I really but Joe, Joe Corrigan took it up. Yeah, took yeah. The he was the first goalkeeper to do it. Yeah, he man city because Malcolm Madison phoned me. He said, Why are you wasting your time seeing Jennings? I said, what do you mean, why am I wasting your time? She said, you're wasting your time. And she was the first goalkeeper to do it. There's a book coming out. There's a book coming out. But I, um, I, it's, I forget what it's called. Uh, it comes out the 2nd of March. And um, it's about the 70s. And there's a whole chapter on me. And that person actually says the big mistake that Pat Jennings made not doing the gloves because somebody else did. He mentions Corrigan. And he went on and, uh, uh, and picked up all the money. Wow. Yeah, that's it. That's what happened. And I, I, I'm honestly, I had ideas um, when I was at Leeds. I had this, the, the best thing was the shin pads for Norman Hunter. I said, Norman, wh where do you get her? He said, on, on the shin pool. What I'm talking about? I said, well, you don't need the rest of it. Why don't you? I just, and it's just a hard shin bit. And I put Norman Hunter on it. And then I did uh, the TC6, which I mentioned in, in the Glory Book. And uh, the TC6 was all the different parts on the, on the uh, uh, a boot. So he said, this is where you have to hit it if you're doing a volley. Uh, this is where you have to hit it if you're going to bend it around the wall. I did it on, on the, and it all went to Don. Uh, Don, Don sat on them all. <laughs> and then he got the England job. And bingo, that was it. So uh, none, of I that, think, none of that. I think the company called St Stylo got involved with that, uh, that boot. Listen, you remember that? Stylo was Stylo. a Leeds company. Look, Stylo, well, you mentioned a good thing there. I'll tell you something which you don't believe. Paul Ziff, I got to know him very well. And uh, he was on the, on Stylo. And they signed Georgie Best, you remember? Yes. They got Georgie Best. Now, I worked with Georgie. I'll tell you one thing, Georgie couldn't have draw. He Could did. He? Georgie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Georgie said me, can you give me some more tips on drawing? I said, can you give me some tips on how to play? He said, no, cool, come on, what are you talking about? He said, no, he said, but can you give me some tips on drawing? I said, no, I don't know how I draw, I was never taught. He said, what do you mean? I said, I've never taught. I said, do you ever get times? Said, Look, this is why I admire you, Steve. And you don't, this is what happens to someone who's talented. And, they, and I always remember saying to Paul Gascoigne, I said, Paul, what, what's the one thing you don't like hearing in the dressing room? He said, when they say, we can do with a couple of goals from you today, Paul, when you think, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to play. Do you get that? I said, yeah, I get that when I draw. Sometimes I come down, I've got boxing gloves on. I can't draw. And I don't know how to get it right because I never, I was never taught. I, it was just something I could do naturally. It was a gift. I said, George, do you ever get it? Do you ever get it when you, he said, yeah. He said, what well, was the first one to tell you they got the, uh, couldn't, I said, look, Stevie Perry, and I keep mentioning you, I tell you, Stevie Perryman, he never plays a bad game. He doesn't always play a great game, but he, he, he said, because he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. I, I don't. I just go out and it happens. It just happens, Paul. He said, and uh, 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 I said, you know, I was, I had to do the front cover of the, of the um, weekly sport interview 
and it was 19, 19, um, um, 53, 54 final. It was uh, Preston playing West Bromwich Albion. Uh, and uh, I went up and I had to draw Millard and Tom Finney. And I, I, I did it on the, in the car. I went to Millard first and I got to look Tom about an hour late. And I said, have you got Tom finished? Telephone number, I'm late. And they said, he's out there waiting. I said, he's waiting. I went out there and Tom said, hello. Where have you been? I said, I'm sorry, to, I wasted your time. He said, when I got a ball on my feet, you haven't wasted your time. I said, God, bloody hell. I heard that again from Bremner. Bremner always said to me when I was at Leeds, when I haven't got a ball on my feet, I've wasted the day. Why aren't you working at your studio with a pencil in your hand? So that was Bremner. I never, I, I liked Bremner, but I, I didn't really get on with him that well. So the bottom line, <laughs> the bottom line was, uh, Tom Finney said, Pick a spot on the crossbar. I said, the middle. He went, bang. I said, left hand post. Bang. I said, corner flag. And he's right he's in the middle, outside the penalty area of the goal. He said, which corner flag? I, I said, the left. He went, bang. He hit it. I said, God. He said, I wish the final was today. I said, why's that, Tom? He said, because it's there. Do you get that when you draw? I said, yeah, I get that. Sometimes when I, it's so easy. I, I don't, I can draw with that thinking. I can draw. He said, well, I want, wish it was the final today. In the final, they got beat 3 2, and today Tom would have been subbed and they took him off. Tom had a oh. terrible game. It didn't happen. It's one of those that you can't do it. You can't guarantee. Look, Georgie Best said, I've gone in to the dressing room and said to Matt Busby, Matt, uh, look, Matt, uh, I'm not up to it today. I've got, uh, she looked, Matt, just give me 20 minutes, George. Just 20 minutes. Fight the life out of them. Try and get a goal. Okay, I go out there and I think, bloody hell, this is it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm playing, it's great, it's all there. Other times I come in, I say, I'm ready today, mate, I'm ready. I run out there and got two left boots. That's Don't it. happen. That's what happened. But it never happened to you because you never played a bad game. That's what Bill, ne I've never forgotten Bill Nick saying that to me. He never said that about any other player. Paul. Steve, you need a PR, man, because you <laughs> didn't know how good you are. <laughs> I really mean that. You were the best. You were Ooh. the best. You'd get into any... Listen, when Sooner said something to me, I never forgot. He said, I would get into every Liverpool team. I don't care which one you pick. I would be in it. And I said, do you really believe that, Graham? He said, yeah. I said, you're probably right. And he said, can you name a Spurs player and get into any team? I said, yeah, Stevie Perryman. You ask Graham Sooner, you tell me I said that. I said, Stevie Perman never played a bad game. He said, what are you talking about? I said, he didn't always play great ones. But you, look, Steve, what you was good at, I mean this, you didn't waste the ball. If when you got the ball, it, you was always thinking of the team, not of Steve Perryman. Now, if, that's that's, that's I, very I, true. That's very right. true. Paul, true. Paul, tell me about the Leeds team. Don Revy introduces you to the Leeds team to sell them the idea of the sock tags and the names on the tracksuits and the coordinated warm-up and stuff. How did you sell it to them? These are a bunch of hard-nosed professionals that I have heard most things oh, before. I tell you, I tell you. Then she says, it's in the book. I tell you, this is big. Now, this is big. Numbers are sell, I tell you. I went up there. Bill Nix turned it down, didn't want it. But he said, I'll have a word with, because um, uh, they broke his uh, uh, ankle in three places. They knew him well. Uh, and Don knew him, he knew Shankly well, they used to talk and laugh on the phone. I always remember when he said to Bill Nick, Bill Nick was no mug. He said to Bill Nick, wanted Paul Madeley, he's trying to fight all Paul Madeley. And, and Don said to me, I don't know what position is his best. I don't know what I shall. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll have a word with Nick. It, when Nick, Bill Nick was around, I was there and he said, uh, so you want Paul Madeley? He said, hey, tell me one thing, uh, Bill, if I told you him, where would you play him? Bill Nick said, in the first team. And that's what he said. <laughs> that's Bill Nick. He no man. He said in the oh. first team. So that was it. So when I went there, I'm selling it to Don. And Don is talking to me all the time about the things I do in the press. He said, Paul, you're the great artist. It's great stuff you've done. I love the stuff you, you, you do. You, you could be a great voice for us. I said, no, no, no. I want to I do something for the fans. I love the fans. I want the fans. Do something for the fans. He said, no, 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 Paul, look. I said, no, look, I want them to wear the sock tags. I've just seen Les Cocker. I want the players to come out early. He said, oh, God. He said, and then the end, Paul, you've sold it. You've sold me. Now you've got to convince the players. 
you sold it on me. But I've been around a long time, Steve, and I knew I hadn't. I knew I hadn't. And it wasn't until in, because I got on well with Jack, I didn't end, but Big Jack got me the job for the Republic uh, when I did the, for the uh, uh, Sunday Mail. I did them when the Republic got to the 1990 World Cup. I did all the drawings for 26 weeks. I got to know Jack and Jack told me the truth. I said, what happened, Jack? He said, Don come up to me and said, look, he's come up from London. He can be very useful with the press. He's great with the artists, he's great. I don't want to fall out with him. So you tell him to get back to London. Get him out, because if he starts talking, because a good salesman, <laughs> he said, get him out. So when I went in, I didn't know this, this Jack told me, I went on the stage and he said, right, lads, I said, you're going to win the cup, get back to fucking London. And it was big Jack stood up. I said, what's all about? He said, get back to London. Get out, we don't want that. I said, what? let me say something. He says, get back to London. And I saw a football on the floor. This is all true. The boys will tell you. I picked it up. And I remembered. Remember, sister. Remember, I could catch anything. I could catch lightning. And I said, don't catch it. Don't got it. I said, throw it against the wall and I'll catch it. If I don't catch it, and throw it as hard as your life, if I don't catch it, I walked out. And all the boys watched. And Jack said, kick it against the wall, Don. Kick it as hard as you can. And Don kicked it. I caught it. But I lost a tooth and my mouth was bleeding because it went through and it was boom. But I caught it. And Jack sat down. I thought, bloody hell. And I heard Gary Spray say, fuck, I can't believe it. Hold the bloody thing. And then I said, this is, you're going to win the cup. You see what I did, didn't you? I didn't back off, did I? And you're not going to back off. You're going to win it. You're going to go out there. And I listened. And I said, no, I want you to wear sock tags. And I want you to come out early. And Les Cocker's going to get you three at a time. There are 12 of you coming out. Mick Bates, 12th man. And you're going to split up. It's going to be the Red Arrows, but on the ground. You're going to go to the four corners. You're going to run around. Big Jack come up to me and said, I'm not a tiller girl. I said, no, I'm, <laughs> a girl. I'm not asking you to be a tiller girl. I'm asking you to do an exercise. A warm-up exercise. You're the fittest team I've ever seen. No one jumps as high as you, Jack. Look when you jump. You'll fight the life out of the crowd when they see you run. I'll do it. I'll do it for the rest of the team. But I'm telling you now, I wear a sock tag. But if we don't win that cup, you know what I'm going to do with a sock tag? Do you know what I'm going to do with it? I said, you can do what you like. So they agreed to do it. And now I was happy. But then on the day, that day, the sixth round, I went in the dressing room. I said, Don, where's the sock tags? You're playing Tottenham. This is when we were going to do it. This is what you said, but we do it. He said, Paul, it's not, come on. We look, look, it's all right for you. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows you. But if we lose, I said, what? Look, it, it, it'd be egg on our face. I, I can't. He said, but it's a tough, look, do it. We do it next week against Arsenal. But not, we I said, Don, I wouldn't have you in my team. What? I said, you're a loser. I'd have you on the bench. That's what Dick <laughs> said to me. That's what I'm saying to you. You're a loser. He said, I'll get. I said, no, I'm leaving. I walked through the door. He said, right, go. I said, now I'm going to tell the first Leeds player I see. I don't care who it is that you don't believe they can win today because that's why they're not wearing the sock tags. He said, come back in. Put the sock tags out. Put them out. Put them out. Put them out. And I put all the sock tags out. And then the boys come out with the side. You know, they didn't know about it. I put it in the book, though. The boys know it. The boys know it. So that is, there was a team of, um, they were unbelievable. They really, literally were unbelievable. Because you kick one Leeds player, you kick the 11. Absolutely. If you kick the 11, I promise you, if you kick one Leeds player, you would kick the 11. But they all at you. The first one who could get you, that's what the rule was. That was a team. You know what they did for the final? Now, my, look, my mate was Alan Ball. And Alan Ball used to play golf. And I only used to putt. Boom, 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 boom. And on the eve of the final, nobody knows this, even that, even that sixth round of the cup. No, the final. The final, it was the final. On the eve of the final, on the Friday night, I get a phone call. Uh, it's just Don Revy. What, what's the matter, Don? Listen, 
The boys are a bit edgy, a bit jumpy, a bit jumpy. Uh, can you bring your putting game over? Uh, and, and a couple of belt, uh, 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 putters and, and half a dozen balls. I said, I, I bring that, um, what do you mean? She said, I want to play a game. You're going, little game. She, it, you know, you do the putting. So I took it over because Don loved his golf. He always took one day off for golf, one day off for golf. I went over there and Don said to me, I don't know if it's a good idea. He's always changing his mind, Don. He was a funny, because that didn't shoot him on everything. He said, I don't know. I said, look, if they went to bed now, would they sleep? I said, no, they wouldn't sleep. I said, right, let's do the putting game. So we put it down and all of them, first one to miss with Alan Clark, bang. They all started to miss, all putting a fiver in. And one person who was there was a little boy. And I looked at his thought, oh, who was it? It was Les Cocker's son. Don't you, little lad? Little lad. And I thought, cool. So anyway, I will put the money in. The last one was Johnny Giles. And Johnny Giles didn't miss from four feet. Every time I knocked one in, so did Johnny. I knocked it in, so did Johnny. And then Don said, this is going to go on all night. I'm going to move it back to six foot. I thought, that's it. That was a secret. The reason I never missed from four feet was that I never aimed at a four foot hole. I aimed at a six foot hole. And by hitting it that hard, he took out all the balls. There's no bar, no bar. If you hit it straight, and I draw, boom, I can draw a straight line. I draw a pen and ink. Everyone's a one for seven. I can do it. Woof. And Johnny went up first. Boom. And he missed. And yet Johnny had said to me before he took the putt, Paul, I've took a penalty in front of 100,000 of you. You've never done that. I know what pressure is. I'm not going to miss. But he did. And then I went up. And I thought, I don't want to beat him, not before the final. So I put the batter back and then took it over the ball and knocked it behind me. And next minute, I'm six foot in the air. It's all true. And my shirt split. This big Jack holding me in the air. You don't leave until you pop. And put me down. I thought, all right. Got down. I'm the man. Boom. Straight in. Picked up all the money put it in my torn shirt, all the lot, honestly. And, and this is a true story, put it all in. And as I'm walking out the door, someone caught me arm. I thought, it's Jack again. Oh, bloody hell. Turn around, it was Alan Clark. He said, I'm going to score tomorrow, Beaver. He's going to win, the, going to win us the cup. I said, what if, what if, what if uh, Arsenal score? They'll score two. You're going to win tomorrow. And I'm going to score the winner. Promise you. That's a promise, Beaver. That well was, done, well done, Leeds for beating the Arsenal. Yeah, they beat Arsenal. Look, they beat Arsenal that day. Uh, uh, it wasn't the greatest game, but um, I'm telling you now, uh, that ball that came across, there was no other player on the field would have scored the goal because Mick Jones hit it, and Alan's first, and Alan's top, he's just a forward, and Alan says my first reaction was to volley it, but then it dipped, so you don't think. At that moment, there's no time to think. You react. Yeah. You either react and make a mistake or you react and do it right. And I reacted, pick it out. It's in the back of the net. And that was it. They'd won the cup. And I, I was happy. And, and then, look, 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 my proudest moment, it's 50 year, at your anniversary. And I get a phone call. Uh, this is Peter Emerson. I'm chairman of the Leeds United Supporters Trust. I said, yes. He said, um, listen, Paul, he said, um, it's 50 years since you made us the first modern club. We were the very first team to come out and, uh, uh, and, um, uh, and do the exercises. They all copied us uh, the following season, but we were the first. We were the first. We were the first team to have our names on our back. And we were the first team to uh, uh, kick out target balls, first team to have stuck in touch. I said, yeah, I know that. He said, well, we want to make your only memory of the support. I said, oh, thanks very much. It's very good. He said, can I come and see you? I said, yes, and present you with the... I said, yeah, I would like that. And I went up there, and I was meeting a man who was going to give me uh, a, a, an exhibition with my art. And when he, when I didn't like doing exhibitions, and I wasn't going to talk... I was going to talk him out of it, because when I did an exhibition in London, I saw all my paintings, and, and they were expensive. I mean, there were some of them were 10,000. I sold them all. And then the, they said to me there, listen, don't ever stop from doing selling originals. Don't do anything else. But all the Spurs fans come in and football fans come in. Can you find and shoot? Can you sign this? Can you sign that? Uh, we can't afford these. 
said, well, what can you afford? I said, no, this isn't fair. We can't afford these. I said, well, what can you afford? Match ticket. Make it the same price as a match ticket. I said, right, I'll do prints. I said, will you really? I said, yeah, I make prints every month. If you can't afford the original, I make prints. I want to do, I want to do original, uh, I want to do any exhibitions. So I was going out to tell the guy, no exhibitions. And when I got there, I'm sitting there thinking I'm talking to Pete Emerson. And we're both talking. And I don't know, he doesn't know what I'm saying. I'm three years old, remember? I'm not the cleverest man in the world. I don't mean all right. And he, he suddenly gets up and reads. And I'm talking, I call him, the kick calling him Peter. He said, it's not my name. And I kept calling him. And then someone says, Beaver. And it's Peter Emerson. He said, Paul, this is for you. And he gave me a, a, an award. I can't believe this. He said, uh, support us to us. Now I've done something which they should do at Tottenham, but they won't. That Bill Nicholson, I told Donna, I said, Donna, you could have been the first modern club. I said, Donna, you should do this and this. And, she, and Donna's my neighbour. Do you know that? She's my neighbour. Didn't know that. Oh, yes, she's my neighbour. Oh, yeah, I see Donna. She, she, when I go out and take my little dog for a walk, I see Donna with her dog, and she says, oh, boom, 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 she tells me all the stories. I say to her, what's happened to Harry? We're going to get, she's great. She, I love Donna. I love Donna. She's very good to me. Uh, she's in the director's box, and, and Pete Emerson has set me up right by the director's box. I sent Donna an email. I said, Donna, will you be at the game on, on, on uh, Saturday? Uh, and she said, yes. I said, I'm, I'm coming past the director's box. She said, I'll give you a wave, Paul. I'll look out for you. So I'm in the director, I'm in the, uh, in the Bremner suite, but right by the director's box and right by the press box. I can talk to both of them. And Eddie Gray is the one walking down the aisle. So I'm there on Saturday. I'm there. It, and uh, I, the boys want it to be 2-1 again to leave. Wow. And they think I'm wow. going to bring them luck. But uh, uh, look, Conte, Conte is a... Is, is a <laughs> Conti is it says one thing last night which was true keep changing the coach but you don't change the team and mm. I'm telling you the team you played for that would beat the team we got now it would really beat the team we put that team was a terrific team that team that won the UFA Cup was I, mean, I said to Bill I said it, we took you took three points off Tottenham that season before the cup match you know that you took three points off Leeds off of Leeds yeah Cost us a double. He told me that. Yeah. Money Chapman tossed us a double. He always yeah. said that to me. I said, Your team Chapman cost us a double. I said, I know they're the best. They're the greatest. Paul, that's a good place to finish. Thank you very much. I'm going to finish oh, off. Great. I'm going to finish off with something. In 2011, Trevelyan was shortlisted for the prestigious Sports Journalist Association Cartoonist of the Year Award. Marking this feat at the age of 75, his longtime colleague, Norman Giller, who's a good friend of ours, commented in a tribute on the SJA website to describe Paul as a cartoonist is to trivialize a career dedicated to producing outstanding art. I don't think we can say any more. Paul, you've been a delight. Thank you very much for talking to us. Sorry, Howard, I couldn't come back to you more. <laughs> <laughs> well, great I pleasure. Could, Thanks, Paul. I couldn't get a word in. To be fair. I, this has made my night. It's made my week. It, I, honestly, I'm so... It's a privilege to be able to talk to Steve Perryman, honestly, and see that face. You are the best, boss. I mean it. You are the best. Paul, love you to death. Come I on, love you Spurs. To death. Come on, the boys. Come, come on, on, you Spurs. <laughs> Thanks for listening, troops, and we'll yeah. see you next next time. See you soon. Bye, Paul. Bye. Bye, Tom. Bye, Howard. Thank you. <laughs>